Hello friends, welcome once again in the video and today we are going to discuss on the topic volume of distribution. As absorption is measured in terms of viability, viability tells us how much amount of drug has been absorbed. In the same manner, how much amount drug has been distributed, this idea can be obtained from volume of distribution. This volume of distribution is also termed as apparent volume of distribution and it is a measure of distribution of drug and it is represented as VD. Now this distribution is very important. One should have basic idea about the distribution because whenever the dose of a drug has been decided, this factor is considered. It affects the pharmacological action it affects the onset of action and, and it also affects the half-life of drug also. Therefore, the dose of drug is also affected. How? Let us see. See, this is the basic graph we know and we have been studying. This is plasma concentration time graph. We know until and unless a minimum level of a drug is reached, it will not show the pharmacological response. The drug it has answered into the blood. How is the patient? Drug is taken from the different dosage form. Either it may be solid, liquid or parental. It reaches into the blood. And after reaching into the blood, what happens? There is increasing concentration and action is seen when, when minimum level is achieved. So you just think the drug has gone inside and the concentration is increasing slowly slowly when the time was zero there no concentration but as the time passes concentration increases as soon as this level is achieved response is seen but does this occur in the same manner as soon as the drug comes here distribution also occurs we know the process of transfer reversible transfer of drug between the drug and body compartments when the drug reaches here enters in the central compartment it is distributed to other organs also now how much amount has been distributed it depends on many factors that we have already covered in the different videos please subscribe the channel and go through those videos now as i told this minimum level is very important as soon as the drug comes here it is gone where it is gone it has been distributed therefore we should have basic idea now how much amount has been distributed how we can get an idea about this so what we do is how much amount has been distributed to know that there exists a constant relationship between x and c now what is x x means amount of drug in the body the patient who has taken the drug the dose i am talking about and C means plasma drug concentration. What we do is we take drug in the form of IV bolus. IV bolus, you know very well the total amount of drug which has been taken at a time, it is called IV bolus. Intravenous bolus, the patient has taken, and after it has been taken, after that, the plasma concentration of the drug is measured and as per the definition of volume of distribution, we keep in this formula and we find out, we calculate the <coughs> value of VD. So volume of distribution is equal to X upon C. The question which has come, how it has been expressed, the volume of distribution is expressed in liters or liters per kg. Expressed in liters or liters per kg means volume of distribution is measured in liters or liters per kg. Now take two examples to understand more about the volume of distribution. The case 1a, the patient has taken IV bolus 100 mg, okay, 100 mg of drug has been taken and after that the same drug has been measured in the plasma. What was observed? Only 1 mg was there. So according to this formula, the value we calculated, it came 100 liters. This was one case. Now second case, a B drug was taken. Again, 100 mg was injected and plasma concentration was also measured. Then in that case, 
this value of C came 10. So according to this formula, it came 10 liters. So two different cases are there. In this case, 100 liters and in this case, 10 liters. So in this case, 100 liters volume distribution. In this case, 10 liters of distribution. So what does it mean? It is just the value. So does the drug has been distributed in 100 liters? Does the drug has been distributed only in 10 liters? See, what we want is, we want to know how much amount has been distributed. Where the drug has gone after coming into the blood, where it has gone and how much has been distributed. See, the drug has gone in the body water. The body water comprises of three different waters, intracellular fluid, extracellular fluid and blood plasma. So means where distribution occurs, it occurs in body, means total body water. This total body water comprises of three things, blood plasma, extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid. So first we will see how to measure the total amount of this and what are the different agents used. So this is an example of 70 kg adult and these are the three different waters, blood, Accessory fluid and intracellular fluid. In 70 kg adult, the blood is 6 liters, extracellular fluid is 12 liters, and intracellular fluid is 24 liters, while plasma is only 3 liters. And if we add up, it comes around 42, means total body water in healthy adult of 70 kg, it is 42 liters. Now we will see how to measure these different liters, diff different fluids. The blood can be measured or plasma can be measured by Evans blue, Indocerin green and iodine 131 albumin. These are the substances which are having high molecular weight. They bind to albumin and they remain confined to blood vessel. Suppose this is the blood vessel and if these agents are there, they will remain here. They will not come out. Therefore, these are used to measure the volume of blood or plasma. Next, extracellular fluid. Extracellular fluid is measured by mannitol, inulin and raffinose. Intracellular fluid is measured by the difference between total body water and extracellular fluid. Extracellular fluid can be measured by these agents. Now what about total body water? Total body water is measured by D2O that is heavy water, appreciated water H2O and substance like antipyrin. Therefore, when we obtain this value, this can be easily obtained. Now, according to this table, the drug should have VD 6 to 42 liters. This is 6, this is 42. The drug after reaching into the blood, it has been distributed. Where? In the body fluids, the maximum amount is 42. It means it should not come beyond 42. But what we have seen? 100 liters and 10 liters. But why it came? It came because of this value, C value. So it means variation in C value. This is the case, variation in the VD value. Now why this variation came? Because this C was distributed in organs. As soon as it came, all the particles, they moved into the different organs they distributed. Now, why? Because drugs have property. What kind of property? They either bind to plasma proteins or they bind to extravascular tissues or they bind to bone. Depending on this, the value can be 6 to 42 and more than 42. Now, based on this, few generalizations are made. Now, what are those generalizations? We will see one by one. First, volume of distribution, it is a pharmacokinetic parameters that tells that whether the drug will remain in plasma or the drug will bind to other tissues. It will leave the plasma and it will bind to extravascular tissue. This was first generalization. Now the second generalization, drugs which selectively bind to plasma proteins means drugs which will remain here which will bind to albumin like those drugs we are talking about drugs which will bind selectively to plasma proteins and less bind to extravascular tissues 
their apparent volume of distribution is less than true volume of distribution. True volume of distribution was 42. And the drugs which bind, which remain here, their VD is less than 42. For example, warfarin has 10 liters volume of distribution. Therefore, such drugs have volume of distribution, the range of which lies between 6 to 42 liters. Why 6? Because minimum is 6 only, blood and maximum is 42. Why it will not cross? Because drug will remain here only means this value will become more because we are missing the concentration in blood or plasma. Now what is the second generation? Let us see. Now we talk about the next generalization point. Drugs which bind to extravascular tissues Drugs which bind to exhaustion issues, for example, chloroquine. The value of volume of distribution of such drugs is greater than total body water, means it is greater than 42 liters. For example, chloroquine has volume of distribution around 1500 liters. And such drugs, they leave body very slowly and are toxic in the nature in comparison to the drugs which do not distribute. Therefore, such drugs leave slowly and are more toxic. So this was the points related to this. Now we talk about the clinical implications, how volume of distribution is useful. First, Volume of distribution, it helps in estimating the dose or calculating dose required to achieve a given plasma concentration. Means, in to understand, again we are referring this graph, plasma concentration time graph. See the action, suppose we want to achieve this level, which is a minimum level. This minimum level will achieve only when the concentration of drug crosses this. Now, when it will cross, when free drug will be available in the blood or it will be available in the blood vessel. Now what happens in distribution as soon as a drug molecule comes and if it is not present in the blood vessel, it which is not present in the vascular compartment, due to distribution it will swept away, it will be distributed. Therefore this minimum will not achieve, this minimum level will not be achieved. In this case, Volume of distribution gives an idea that this much amount should be there. This much amount should be distributed. After that only minimum level will be achieved. So this was the first clinical implication. Second, volume of distribution, it affects the Cmax means peak plasma concentration. And it is very useful in the drugs like hypnotics whose pharmacological activity is related to CMAX only, you understand this better. Now, next thing we will cover the factors related to the volume of distribution. There are two factors which, are, which affect the volume of distribution. First is factor related to the drug and second one is factor related to the patient. In factor related to the drug, again there are three sub points acidity or basicity of the drug and third is lipophilicity or hydrophilicity or overall we can say that as either drug is acidic in nature, drug is basic in nature or drug is lipophilic or hydrophilic. First we will see the hypophilicity and lipophilicity. See we have been studied in the different chapters in the absorption also in the factors affecting distribution also. More the lipophilic drug is more of the chances of distribution because the permeation is related to the lipophilicity only. If the drug is more lipophilic, there are more chances of permeation. Suppose this is the blood vessel and the drug is there. Due to lipophilicity, it can easily cross the phospholipid bilayers which are present around the cells or cell membrane. Therefore, the drug which are having high lipophilicity, they have more permeation, they will leave more plasma means there are chances of leaving plasma is more and therefore they will be having higher volume of distribution in comparison to drugs which are hydrophilic in nature. Overall, 
more lipophilic, higher volume of the secretion. Now, acidity or basicity. We have also studied in the previous video which have been uploaded that acidic drugs have propensity to bind with albumin and albumin due to high molecular weight increase inside it remain confined to the blood compartment. So the acidic drugs which have affinity for albumin they remain in plasma and because they remain in plasma their volume of distribution is less in comparison to the basic drugs. Next, basic drugs. These basic drugs, they have strong interaction with the phospholipids of the membrane and because of this, they leave the circulation as we have encountered in this case also. They leave the circulation and because they leave the circulation, they are distributed in the extravascular tissues and therefore, they, are, they will be having high volume of distribution in comparison to the acidic drugs. So these are the factors related to the drug. Now we will discuss the factors related to the patient. These factors are related to the physiology and pathology of the patient. Three sub factors are there pediatrics and adult dosing, obesity and normal patient, and disease condition. We will discuss these three to justify this. Now, pediatrics and adult dosing. If we compare a pediatric child, sorry, a pediatric patient and an adult patient. There is a great variation in the body composition, in the fat content, in the fluid content and therefore because there is variation in fat and fluid content, body composition changes and therefore there will be variation in volume of distribution also and therefore loading also is also changed. Now what is loading dose? It has been dealt in the different video, you can go there. Now, this was first, now we will come to obesity versus normal. Again, obese patients have higher content of adipose tissues. Higher content of adipose tissues means extra compartment for storage. More distribution of drug will be there. More lipophilic drug will be there for longer time. And body composition is also different of an obese patient in comparison to normal patient. So that we can say polymorph distribution is also different. Now third is disease state. Disease state like hyperalbuminemia, it is particularly useful in altering the binding characteristics of the drugs which bind to albumin. For example, we have seen here in case of acidic drugs. So the drugs which are mainly confined to the blood compartment and if the patient is suffering from the disease like hyperalbuminemia, which is characterized by decreased albumin, there will be change in binding and definitely there will be change in volume of distribution also. So here we complete volume of distribution. In today's lecture, we have covered what is actually volume of distribution, how it is calculated, what are the clinical implications and what are the factors affecting volume of distribution. Now this was related to the distribution. Other things which are related to the distribution chapters like factors affecting basic concepts. A whole idea can be obtained from the videos which have been already uploaded to the channel. Please go through it, subscribe to the channel, like, comment and share. And also don't forget to press the bell icon so that as soon as the video is released, you get the notification. Please keep in touch, keep studying. Best of luck. Thank you.